Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yeah. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord one more day. Yeah. Oh, for our Lord, our God, set our souls on fire last night, and we just believe that tonight it will go higher. Yeah. Oh, we come to praise Him tonight. We come to give Him all the glory, give Him all the honor. We come to give Him all the praise. For nobody has been like our God. Nobody has blessed us like He has blessed us. Nobody has kept Him like He has kept you. And so if I were you tonight, I would not hold back. I would give every praise that I have. I would give every, every shout that I have because of what He is and who He is. Sometimes you just got to thank God not so much about what you have in your possession, but just because his name is Jesus. Is there anybody that's like excited just to call his name Jesus? Are you excited tonight just to know that he is a way maker? He is a burden bearer and a heaven old sheriff. I'm just glad to know that it's Jesus. I'm so glad just to have my brother in the house tonight for on many occasions when he's come, he was standing in my stead and I was away, but it's so good to be right with him tonight. Oh, we're going to have a great time. If you open up your mouth and bless the Lord right now, you know you'll set the atmosphere. That's all we want to do is give the Holy Ghost free reign to move the super room to move in our spirits tonight. I'm coming tonight just to say, have your way, God. Do what you do best. And because of who you is, every praise, every word of worship is to our God. Come on, help us sing every praise. Every praise. Yeah. <laughs> 
while being very actively involved in his church youth group. Through various ministries and opportunities, his college and experiences, and his uh, seminary education, he was able to clarify the focus of his calling. And then Reverend Darby was licensed to preach the gospel on January the 5th, 1992, and was ordained as a minister of the gospel in October of 27th of 1996 at the Central Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Reverend Dana Darby attended the American Baptist College in Nashville, Tennessee, where he his concentration in biblical studies and received his BA degree in 1995. In 1999, Reverend Dana Darby received his Masters of Divinity from Virginia Union University School of Theology of theology in Richmond, Virginia. His studies while at Virginia Union were pastoral care and Christian education. Amen. Amen. The Lord has honored Reverend Dana Darby to serve in many ministries as pastor, teacher, Christian education director, chaplain, and other fair, uh, great positions. And he is now presently pastor elect. New, a greater new hope, yeah. Missionary Baptist Church, yeah. and New Haven, Mississippi. Yeah. New Haven, won't be there. Yeah. But that's not all. In September, a great day, in September the 13th, 2008, he married the former Renee Coleman and they are the proud parents of two beautiful children. Uh, I see Pastor and Renee all the time on Facebook with those beautiful children. Got a boy and a girl. They look like both of y'all. I tell you, they, they just gorgeous. But uh, one of the most things that I'm so proud of is that this brother, whenever I have called him, he was ready. I said, I need you uh, Reverend Darby, and he says, Pastor, just to give me some date, give me the date. And he has come through and preached so many times at Beulah First, and uh, there's nothing more uh, proud than I am to call him my friend. That's, that's, that's what's important. Not just he's a preacher, he's a friend. And so he has done great works of preaching the gospel throughout the city of Detroit, and I'm just excited now to see what God's going to do in this next chapter as he uh, restructure 94 and make some things happen up that way. And so I'm just excited about that and can't wait to the installation. I, I can't wait to stomp my few, few feet behind something up there. Amen. He's been stomping his feet behind here a long time, so we we be ready to go on the road to go up there. Uh, but without further ado, I want you to extend your hand to him from out there and you reach behind him and extend your hand to your pastor here and say, Pastor Darby, Pastor Darby we ready for you. Pastor Darby, let the Holy Ghost use you. And Pastor Darby, we are praying for you. After the choir shall come, the next voice that you shall hear will be our guest preacher for the night. Pastor-elect, Reverend Lamar Dana Darby. Right. Amen. 
not content now. He's excellent. Amen. Join me in prayer. Lord, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my Redeemer. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Giving praise to God, to my friend. Amen. My brother in Christ, Pastor Reuben Benjamin. Amen. Grateful for him. Amen. He has truly been a friend. Allow me to use my gifts and talent here. Amen. And he entrusted me with his pulpit while he was away so many times, and I'm grateful for it. Amen. To my colleagues in the ministry and to all of you, God's children, to Lady Benjamin. Amen. Good to see my own wife, Simone. Amen. And to you, all of you again, God's children, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I am so grateful for it. A Greater New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we do have a few members in the audience also. May I that you stand and you sit in stand and you sit in the congregation so we can acknowledge you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There is a word from the Lord, and we stand for the reading of God's word. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. All right. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. Amen. Again, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. Amen. You'll find these words in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Amen. I want to use for a subject of thought on this evening, what to do when people get on your nerves. When people get on your nerves, amen. One tool that Satan uses to keep down, to keep us down, is the tool of discouragement. Satan uses many ways to take away our confidence, our hope and keep our spirit low. Yeah. He uses our past failures. He reminds us of those things, of those times when we fell short of our goals. All right. He reminds us of those things, those, those times when we did not achieve our goals. Yeah. He uses our limitations and our restrictions to discourage us. He reminds us of the things that we cannot do. Yeah, right. He uses bad news to discourage us. Yeah. Yeah. Gas prices are high, yeah. layoffs and strikes, the cost of living is going up, mm. the sickness or the death of a friend or a loved one, yeah. crime in our community and yeah. our city. Yeah. He reminds us who we used to be. Yeah. Our past sins, he brings up our regrets and our resentments. Yeah. Satan has so many ways to discourage us. Yes. So many ways he uses to keep our spirit down. Yeah. But one tool that Satan uses to keep us down, he uses people. Satan has a way of getting people to talk negative about us. All right. Amen. Satan has a way of getting people to backstab us and backbite us. Yeah. Satan has a way of getting people to dig ditches in our way. Yeah. Satan has a way of getting people to be jealous of us and envious of us. Yeah. Satan has a way of using people to criticize us and put us down. Yeah. Satan has a way of using people to discourage us. Yeah. 
And when I was young, there was a saying that I've learned, and I used to say it, it went like this, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And I have to disagree with that statement because if the right person call you out of your name, it will hurt you. Let a so-called friend call you out of your name. It will hurt you. Let your child, who you've been taking care of all his or her life, call you out of your name. It will hurt you. Let someone you admire call you out of your name. It will hurt you. Let your spouse, the one you walk down the aisle with, and call you out of your name. It will hurt you. Even if some of your enemies call you out of your name, it will hurt you. And I don't care how strong you may be. There are times in life when people, when people will get on your nerves and they will hurt you. King David, one day his testimony was, my, my tears have been my meal day and night. While they continually say unto me, where is thy God? One day Paul and Silas was doing ministry, saving souls, preaching the gospel. And there was a woman with a demonic spirit start following them. She got on their nerves and they had to cast that spirit out. And Moses, the people got on Moses' nerves one day. They kept on asking for water and Moses struck the rock more than one time. Twice. What do you do? When people get on your nerves. Well, what do you do when folk get on your nerves, your last nerves? Uh, cussing them out won't help it. Talking about them won't help the matter. Uh, wishing bad things on them won't help the matter. Getting back to them will not help the matter. What should you do? When you're minding your own business and folk keep on picking at you, folk keep on teasing you, folk keep on bothering you, folk keep on messing with you, what do you do when you're minding your own business and people are getting on your nerves? When the text. Hannah had a person yes. who teased her, yes. Yes. picked with her, yes. bothered her, yes. and always messed with her. Yes. In the text, there was a man named Ephraim, and he had two wives, Pidia and Hannah. Verse 2 of this chapter let us know that Pidia had children, but Hannah had no children. Verse 5 and verse 6 let us know that the Lord had shut up Hannah's womb. Yearly, after all, would, would go to Shiloh to worship and give an offering. Wow, at Shiloh, he would give an offering for his two wives, Penia and Hannah, and the children Penia had for him. Verse 5 of this chapter lets us know since Hannah did not have any children, Elkanah would give a worthy portion, portion for her. Verse 7 of the same chapter let us know year after year when, when, when they went up to the house of the Lord yeah. that Pidia would provoke Hannah for not having any children and Hannah would weep and not eat. Yeah. Again, year after year, they, they would go up to the house of the Lord. Yeah. 
and, and, and pity her with provoke Hannah and, uh, for not having any children. And Hannah would, would weep and not eat. Uh, it, it, it was in the house of the Lord where pity uh, would, would, would provoke and tease Hannah. It, it, it was in the house of the Lord. Where, where, where Penny would, would, would get on Hannah's nerves. Yeah. Somebody's not seeing this. Somebody's not seeing this. It, 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 it was in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Where, where, where Penny would, would provoke Hannah. It was in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, where where Penny would, would get on Hannah's nerves. Yeah. Oh, 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 what can we learn from Penny's behavior? What, well, what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn this. Everyone who shows up to worship does not come to worship. Some people may show up just to get on your nerves. How do people get on your nerves? Some people get on your nerves in church. Just wanting to be seen. Y'all know folk like that. Wanting to be important in the church. Some folk get on your nerves in the church uh, just wanting to be heard. Because they're not heard at home. They're, they're not heard on the job. But when they come to the church, uh, they want everybody to hear them. They making a lot of noise and saying nothing. Some folk get on their nerves uh, by seeking attention. Uh, Y'all know folk like that uh, who's always seeking attention. Uh, what, 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 what else can we learn from Penny's behavior? Uh, uh, she's teasing. She's teasing Hannah. She's teasing Hannah. She's teasing Hannah. She's teasing Hannah. She's talking about Hannah. She's provoking Hannah. What else can we learn from behavior? We can learn that some people will tease you for the things that God is doing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It was the Lord who closed Hannah's womb and Penny teased her. And back in that day when, when a woman was unable to have children, people saw that as a curse. Uh, but remember, remember, when God does something in your life uh, that is not popular, don't look at it as something negative, but look at it as something positive because God does not make any mistakes. He knows what he's doing. And somebody's a witness here, he knows what he's doing. You may not have the mansion, you may have your small house, but God knows what he's doing. You may not have the big luxury car, you may drive around in the hoopty, but God knows what he's doing. What did Hannah do? got on her nerves. Uh -huh. what, 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 what did she do? All right. All right. Verse 15, let us know that, 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 that she poured out her soul yeah. before the Lord. Yeah. In, in, in other words, she prayed. Yeah, that's yeah. Pray. Come on now. She was so bothered by what Penny yeah. was saying to her. Yeah. She prayed. She, she, she poured out her soul to the Lord. And one day Eli walked in and saw her. She, she was moving her lips, but she wasn't speaking. And, and Eli said, why are you drunk? Why are you drunk? Why are you drinking? Why are you drunk? And she said, Lord, I'm not drunk. I'm pouring out my soul, my heart to the Lord. She prayed. This is the first thing I want to share with you. Prayer can help. When people get on your nerves. Again, prayer can help you. When people get on your nerves, prayer may not change the situation or the person. But prayer will do wonders for you. Through prayer, your hurt feelings can be healed. Through prayer, 
prayer, your tense nerves can be calmed. Yeah. Through prayer, your troubled soul can be eased. Yeah. Just a little talk with Jesus yeah. will make everything all right. Yeah. He tells us to cast all our tears upon him. Yeah. For he careth for us. Yeah. He tells us, call me in the time of trouble. Billy Graham and Max Lucardo. There is a prayer in the book by Catherine Marshall. She prays, Lord, I have been so defeated by my circumstances. I have felt like an animal trapped in a corner with nowhere to flee. Where are you in all this, Lord? The night is dark. Yeah. I cannot feel your presence. Yeah. Help me to know that, that the darkness is really your shade of your hand outstretched over me. Yeah. That the hemming in is, is your doing. Yeah. Perhaps there was no other way you could get my, get my full attention. Uh, no other way I would allow you to demonstrate what you can do in my life. Yeah. I see that, that the empty, emptier my cup is, the more space there is to receive your love and supply. Yeah. And this is the attitude we have to have. Yes, the emptier my cup is, the more space that there is to receive God's love and supply. Yeah. Uh, this text shows us when, when Hannah felt defeated by her situation, she prayed. Yeah. She called on the name of the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord filled her cup and her life up with his love yeah. and supply. And how do I know this? Because at the end of verse 18, it says, So Hannah went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Yeah. Prayer changed. But no. 
no inner peace. Inner peace is the ability to, to keep yourself grounded and strong even in the midst of stress and turmoil. In verse 11, Hannah prayed that God will give her a male child. Her prayer was, O oh Lord of hosts, that thou would indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, but, but would give unto thy handmaid a male child. Thou will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Inner peace will allow you to turn your situation over to God and allow him to handle it. Inner peace will allow you to say, God, here it is. Handle it. Inner peace will say to you, I will look unto the hill from which come my help. And my help will come from the Lord. Inner peace says, not my will, but God's will be done in my life. Inner peace is relinquishing your desire and will over to God. God, here it is. And although Hannah was being teased for not being able to have a child, she turned it over to the Lord. And this is the word to somebody today. If, if you want to have inner peace, you have to learn how to turn things over to God. You've been carrying that pain long enough. You've been carrying that trouble long enough. You've been carrying that stress long enough. You've been carrying that headache long enough. You got to learn how to turn it over to God. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou Worship has a way of taking our troubles away. 
the text says, uh, wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, uh, about after Hannah to see that she bore a son and called his name Samuel. Oh, when folk get on your nerve, don't run away. Keep your head up. Don't be your head down. But learn how to trust God because of the witness. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.